Good morning, everyone. Myself, Dr. Rakesh Solanki. I'm assistant professor in Department of Orthopedics, Index Medical College Hospital and Research Center, Indore. Today, we are going to discuss about the supracondylar fracture of the humerus. Now, the supracondylar fracture of the humerus are the commonest fracture in children, but very uncommon after the physis has been closed. The humerus breaks just above the condylar area. This is the uh, image showing the distal humerus, anatomy of the distal humerus. This is the lateral epicondyle. This is the medial epicondyle. This condylar area and the distal, distal humerus structure occurs just above this condylar region. And the distal fragment after fracture may be displaced either anteriorly or posteriorly, which is more common in boys and the extension type is much more common. That is around 90% as compared to the flexion type. It can be both extension and flexion, but the extension type of fracture of distal humerus, supracondylar humerus fracture is very common. The mechanism of injury of this supracondylar humerus fracture is fall on the outstretched hand with forearm in pronation. The distal fragment is pushed backward and twisted inwards. The posterior angulations or displacement suggest a hyperextension injury, which is more common. Anterior displacement is due to direct fall on the point of the elbow with joint inflection, which is very rare. There is Gartland's classification of supracondylar humerus fractures. Type 1, that is undisplaced. Type 2 is angulated fracture with posterior cortex still in continuity. Type 2 has two subtypes. Type 2A, a less severe injury with the distal fragment merely angulated. Type 2B is severe injury. The fragment is both angulated and mal rotated. And the type 3 is completely displaced fracture. This is the garden's classification diagrammatically represented. It is type 1, intact anterior posterior cortex. Type 2, posterior cortex is intact, but the fragment is angulated and rotated. And type uh, 3, that is completely rotated. Sorry, completely displaced. The clinical features. There will be a history of fall on outstretched hand. Patient will complain of severe pain and swelling in elbow. There will be typical S-shaped deformity of the elbow, which is visible clinically. And the bony landmarks will be abnormal around distal humerus or elbow joint. Both active and passive movement of the elbow are decreased. And the assessment of neurovascular structures is a must. One must not miss the injury to any neurovascular structure around the elbow joint. The relationship between the tip of the olecranon and the epicondyle are usually normally aligned. Now, if we talk about the displacement of the distal supracondylar humerus fracture, the displacement can be posterior tilt and shift, the proximal shift, the medial tilt, the medial or lateral shift, and the rotational deformity, usually internal rotation. These are the various type of displacement seen in supracondylar humerus structures in children. One should get an X-ray, AP and uh, lateral radiograph of the distal humerus or elbow joint. The fracture is clearly seen in lateral view and fat pad sign is usually seen in undisplaced fracture. If the fracture is posteriorly displaced, fracture line runs obliquely downwards and forwards and distal fragment is tilted backwards or shifted backwards. If the fracture is displaced anteriorly, the fracture line runs downwards and backwards and distal fragment is tilted forwards. A line is drawn that is anterior humeral line. On a normal lateral X-ray, a line drawn along the anterior cortex of the humerus should cross the middle of the capitulum. This line along the anterior cortex of the humerus passes around in the middle of the capitulum. The normal moment's angle is less than 80 degree. There will be fishtail sign, 
crescent sign and the coronoid line. This is grossly displaced supracondylar humerus fracture. The treatment, the treatment of the undisplaced distal humerus fracture is elbow is immobilized around 90 degrees and neutral rotation for three weeks. Every week one has to get the check, check, check x-rays done to make sure that your fracture is not displaced. And if the fracture is uh, mild posteriorly angulated, then uh, manipulation and reduction under anesthesia is performed. If reduction is unstable, then the fracture should be fixed with percutaneous K wires and immobilized in a high arm slave for around three weeks. And again, one has to make sure every week by check x-rays that fracture is reduction is maintained. If the fracture is angulated and mal rotated or posteriorly displaced, usually associated with severe swelling of an unstable and there is risk of neurovascular injury. Reduction under general anesthesia and the uh, reduction is held with percutaneous K wires. This is the reduction manual. One is to apply traction with along with counter traction and with uh, gently pushing the distal fragment anteriorly from posteriorly pressing the olecranon and uh, gently supining supination and pressure movement flexing the elbow the reduction is achieved now when to go for open reduction so when fracture cannot be reduced by a closed method or the we are having an open fracture a fracture associated with neurovascular injury or if there is interposition of the biceps it's that is known as puckering sign or puckering of the bicep anteriorly One can apply skeletal traction with olecranon and pin in, if there are indications of open reduction. Reduction cannot be achieved and manipulation is necessary. Excessive swelling and circulatory compromise, excessive bruising, inherently unstable fractures. So in this uh, in conditions, one need to apply skeletal traction with olecranon and pin. Now, what are the fixation options? If one is performing the pin fixation option, that is KVR fixation, then one can go for two lateral pins or two cross pin, as you can see in this X-ray image, and two or two lateral and one medial pin. What are the contraindications of the pin fixation? The contraindications are severe swelling, open fractures, irreducible fracture, or late diagnosis or mix. Uh, Ignore. Uh, When to go for fixation with plate and screws? When fracture cannot be reduced by close measure, wound is compound, concurrent neurovascular injury, concurrent forearm fracture, or if prolonged immobilization is to be avoided, then one need to fix with plate and screws. The complications of the supracondylar fractures of the humerus, vascular injury, the brachial artery is injured more commonly. If we talk about nerve injury in supracondylar humerus fracture, then anterior interosseous nerve which is branch of the median nerve, radial ulnar. These nerves are injured in the aforementioned sequence, workman's ischemia and compartment syndrome. Late complications are malunion. If the deformity is uncorrected sideways, tilt and rotation may lead to various or valgus deformity. The various deformity is also known as the gun stock deformity. Elbow stiffness, myositis ossificans, tardy ulnar nerve palsy, and the non-union. But the non-union is very common, very less common. This is a diagram showing the Walkman systemic contracture. This is the puncturing sign. The artery at the Bacillus muscle, or sometimes neurovascular bundle, gets impinged by the anterior. This uh, proximal fragment anterior spikes. Thank you very much.